Okay. As the Heilige Mishnah. So we are Mesechus Babakamet Daf. Kuf Yud Tes Omud Aleph, right? Kuf Yud Tes at the very, very bottom of the page. We start a new Mishnah. Basically, the topic of the Mishnah is one of the sure is very much. Lidu Nishma Sovim Oyer Menachem Ben Akiva, who taught me this Omud. Lidu Nishma Sovim Oyer Akiva Ben Itchok, and Lofuas Eskapu Masushan Malka Yudis Bas Rivka. Leo Bas Tomal Avom Shmuel Avrom Ben Yehudi. Tov Shachol Yisrael. The topic of the Mishnah is very simple, and the Rabbim sums it up in one line. Basically, the Mishnah is going to talk about when you give material to a craftsman of all types to work with. Yeah. So now the leftovers, all the small leftovers. Let's say your wife gives the dress to the seamstress to make the fashion designer to design a, a fabric. Yeah. And in the fabric, expensive fabric, and then she cuts the fabric by the size, you know, according to the design of the dress. And there is fabric left over, right? That fabric can be worth money. The Mishnah and Gemara are going to talk about very small things, but even today, you know, if it's an amount that's substantial, then you have to know who owns the actual uh, uh, fabric. Is it something that you give up, you don't mind, and it's maybe part of the seamstress salary, and she can keep the what? leftover pieces of uh, fabric or do you demand it back and you say no give it to me the same thing would be with a man and a tailor the hule, the hule. that's generally the story says the mishnah the koivis is a launderer yeah it's a person who does the laundry for you now we all know the laundry back then was very different to today yeah so now the moichin are like the fluff you have all kinds of fluffy pieces you know small you know leftover small uh, balls of wool here and there that come out in the water. Now, this koivis is a machlokis showing him. Either he washes your clothes or he washes the raw uh, wool. But whatever the case is, there's some leftover residue of extra wool that stays in the water and stays by the koivis. They belong to the launderer. Why? It's very, very simple. The rule is really super simple because they're small, they're small, unimportant, insignificant, and therefore, unless you are the miser of the century, you're not makpid. Now, says Rashi, clearly, even if you are a miser and you do care about the small pieces, we say, as the other Shonim say, in other words, you should run by the regular norm. And if, you know, 90% of people around you do not mind leaving the small bits and pieces left over of the wool by the launderer, even though you're makpid, you have no say. Minaga makoy, minaga oilom, minaga endorsed by the Mishnah is that you're not supposed to be makpid. And if you are makpid, tough, you're tough luck, and the koives would keep it. However, as of course you can guess, here more than ever, Rishonim, Achronim, they all say it depends on minaga makoy. If you live in miser land, you live in a cheap guy land, yeah, cheap state, yeah, is that what call it? Yeah. Then what? Then really everyone's makpid. Then in the Chinami, meaning the is different, but unless known otherwise, yeah, the halachic assumption is you're not makpid about the small pieces from the koivis. However, vasorek, yeah, have you ever even done sorek? Vasorek moitzi arelu shel balabais. So sorek is not a street in the Chemesh. Sorek, what does it mean lesarek? The one who combs, very good. The one who combs, the one who combs the wool, or the one who combs the beged. And that was the whole umnus. Every once in a while, people would take their their garments to be combed, to be combed, yeah, yeah, not like, yeah, yeah to be combed. <laughs> and the koivis also, as he combs the wool, there are some leftovers that are left on his comb, which was made out of, uh, no, made out of thorns, by the way, the, the, that's how the comb was. They belong to balabais. Why? Simple, because the leftovers of the koivis were usually bigger, bigger, better, more expensive, more important, more significant. And therefore, again, Unless you live in Beverly Hills where they don't mind, yeah, or in today's world, most people care about it, and therefore, Mr. Craftsman should give it back to the owner to balabais. Now, more, koivis. A koivis is the person, again, the launderer of the fabric. He may take three threads from the fabric, and they are his. What's going on here? Says Rashi. When they weave the clothes, when they weave the, the, the fabric, yeah, it makes a heck of a lot of noise, yeah, but when they weave the fabric, then what happens? They always, at the end of the fabric, in order to sort of like mark that this is the end of the fabric, 
they would put, they would uh, weave three uh, chutim of weft. You know about weft and warp or if it's, uh, yeah, weft, warp? Good, good, excellent. Well, how do you know weft is weft? Because west, just like east and west goes this way, horizontal, so is weft. Well, warp is the one that's stationary, that's on the loom all the time. And the weft goes sideways. Good, yeah, fine. So now, so they would put three chutim of weft, which are different to all the rest. Let's say the garment is green, they would put three blue in order to show that's the end. But that sort of makes it ugly. So the first time you take your beggar to the koives, the professional koives not only washes it, he also, as we're going to see later, he sort of does a re, as Mechavrusa said, revamp. He would like redo, yeah, sort of make a, a makeup, a re, re, revamp the entire thing. And he would also remove those three uh, chutim, which you don't need anymore, and they're ugly. Because they're ugly, he sort of recuts it, he cuts the corners that we're going to see. And those three chutim that he removes are his. It's part of the agreement that those three chutim are his. Yes, sir, Miken, more than three harel shobalabais. Let's say the weaver, instead of three different chutim at the hem, at the edge, instead of three, he did four, or five, six, seven, eight, then no, there's a limit. In other words, we're going to enter now this gray area of something that the koivis or the sorek do for the beauty of the fabric, but they remove something for the beauty of the fabric, but they keep it for themselves. So they have double interest. You know what I'm saying? It's like a win-win situation. So in this case, if you beautify my baguette, taking away the different color, three threads, that's yours. More than three threads is not yours anymore. I'm very appreciative that you make my uh, garment more, you know, homogenic in color, but excuse me, more than three, not supposed to take. That's the gather that Chazal established. Now, the imho yoshocho al gavalovon. But if that garment, if the last, those end chutim are black over white, you have white, nice white garment, and at the end, the, the, those last weft uh, uh, fibers are black. Black and white is really ugly, unless you write a letter. It's really not nice. I want proper white shirt, you know, for the koilul. If those chutim at the end are black, and that's really ugly, then the what's his name the the no the the launderer can say I'm taking all the black chutim and their mind because black really makes it so ugly it's such an eyesore that Mimela those chutim are supposed to be completely removed I, I guess there's a limit also I don't know twenty of them yeah but if there's a, a nice amount of chutim at the end by the way the chutim are very very thin you understand it yeah the weft is is uh the, these are just threads yeah. So even if you have, I don't know, 10 of them, let's say, they're still just like that thick, you still have, in that case, the black is so ugly, then the Chorvis would say, listen, I'm really beautifying your baguette because black and white is very much, you know, too much of a contrast. And therefore he may take to himself all the black uh, threads that are there. Now, the Mishnah goes on to the tailor. Yeah, we're going through a process, you know, from the wool to the, to the cloth and now to the finished, Chayat. Who's a chayat? A tailor. In modern Hebrew also, chayat is a tailor. A chayat, chait. Chait. What's chait? Chayat. It's a tailor. A chayat shishir sachut kedelit for boy. A chayat has leftover thread that he originally intended to sew with, but it's left, left over. And who provided him with the chut? The balabais, the owner. The matlis shigimel al gimel. Oh, that's the story of the seamstress. Let's say the tailor is cutting the fabric from all sides to make you a beautiful suit for your daughter's chasana. Then what do you say? Obviously, there's some left behind, right? There's all kinds of corners and left over, like a mat list, like a rug, meaning like piece, small pieces of fabric that are left behind. So who gets them? Depends on the size. A mat list, she gimel al gimel, a mat list, which is three over three, it's boys. Three fingers over three fingers, not that big. Three over three fingers. If it's the size of three over three, which in halach is those considered as important shear for, for Tuma, also for, uh, for, uh, uh, for Beged, if it's three over three, it's important enough to be considered the Balabais. And we kindly ask Mr. Taylor to give it back to the Balabais. If it's less than three on three, it's small enough. And then the tailor may keep it. Why does he keep it? Part of his job that's considered to be part of his salary. Yeah, he gets paid per project for making me the most beautiful suit ever. Plus, he gets also those pieces as part of the agreement. If they're small, they stay by him. If they're big, they get they come back to me, the customer. 
Now, we are not talking about uh, fabrics anymore in the Mishnah. We'll go back to the Gemara. Now, the Gemara from now till the end will discuss um, carpenters, people who actually work with wood, woodwork. So now, says the Mishnah, Masha Harash. Harash is like, a, it's like basically Nagar, he's a carpenter. Harash is a type of carpenter. What does he do? He wants to smooth, to smooth, he uses a plane, right? He smoothes the pieces of wood in order to work with them. Masha Harash Moitzi Bama'atzad, Aray If he uses a ma'atzad, ma'atzad is like some kind of plane or a knife that he uses or a saw, depends, that is not very big. And therefore, the pieces that fall off the main block, the chips that fall off the wood that he chisels, are eilu the small, and they belong to Mr. Carpentier. Ubekoshil shel balabait. If he uses koshil, which is a bigger X, and the pieces that fall off the main piece, the pieces that are extra are big. We don't say what's big or small, but they knew in the times of the Mishnah what's matzad, what's koshil. Depends on the size of the tool. If he uses a big tool and the pieces are big, they belong to Shel Balabai, they belong to Balabai, Baruch Hashem. However, comes the Mishnah with a twist at the end. The Im Hoyo Oiset Shel Balabai. Let's say, what's his name, Mr. Carpenter, and I'm now not following Rashi. Rashi is very difficult. I'm following uh, Rambam, Shonoruch, Kelim. Im Hoyo Oiset Shel Balabai. Say the Meforshim, let's say the carpenter is working in your house, physically, geographically in your house. He came to your house to build you a table. He came to your house to build you a cupboard yeah, in, indoors in your in your at-home carpenter. He does not work in his own workshop. He works by you. If he works in your house, then even the nesorim, the sawdust, that's tiny, tiny, the sawdust, you want to keep the sawdust. Yeah, you want your kids to play with it. Benazmani, they're climbing up the walls. My wife keeps buying them every day, uh, arts and crafts everything possible to, to remove them from any other thing, yeah? So you want to use the sawdust for a game. So if the sawdust is smaller than the big pieces we spoke about before, and even from the smaller pieces, even the sawdust so small, if he does it in your house, they belong to you, the owner, the customer. Why? Who cares about the location? Explain the, the sma, the one of the Shulchan Aruch's um, fortune. He says like this. If the carpenter works in his own home workshop, then for me, <laughs> to go especially, <laughs> to go to his thing and start schlepping and moving the small pieces from his workshop to my house, you need a psychiatrist, Rabbi. You need a psychologist for that. And if you want, you need special permission. They probably stay by him. It's a tircha for you to take it in a bag all the way to your house, such a tiny thing which nobody cares about. In mainly the small pieces, we assume you're moichel, right? They're small and they're out of your house. The shank, and if it's in my house, no, leave it here. If there's no tirch on my side, even though the sawdust is small and not significant, well, the mice, it's worth something. And if it's in my house, then it's in my reshus. I wouldn't say it's not about raya, but like they're by me and they'll stay by me unless said otherwise. Why not? Yeah, I may find some use for it. Leave it here. There's a difference between telling the craftsman, leave it here, which makes sense or bring me those tiny pieces all the way from your place. That's already shtickle, you know, you need mental care for that. <laughs> and therefore there we assume that the small pieces stay by the chorosh if it's done in the workshop of the chorosh, of the, of the carpenter. Beautiful. Tanu Rabonon says the Gemara. What? No, stays by the carpenter. No, the small pieces stay by the carpenter if it's in the house of the carpenter. I said that. I, if I said otherwise, I'm sorry. I think I said the right thing, but if not, I'm sorry. No. If the small pieces are, if he did his job in the in the in the workshop of the carpenter, and the pieces are either tiny, there are three sizes, are either tiny like sawdust, or even small small pieces of wood, chips of wood that are considered the small from the smaller kind of hammer, whatever, they stay by the carpenter because they're small insignificant, and most people don't ask them to be delivered to the house, right? He may not stay there, belong to him. If they're big, then they are cordially invited to be brought back to the to the customer's house. However, if the job was done in the customer's house, then everything is his. Isn't life simple and beautiful when you finish with the camera? Just like the Mishnah. Just like I said. However, Allah said, as we said before, these things are extremely flexible. 
And if the person lives in Savion and he gets somebody to his house, <laughs> he'll get one of his maids to just, you know, sweep the floor and he would not care about the sodas. And even if he does, bottle that to sell kolodum. Okay? In other words, it depends a lot in the time of place. Are rich the people here? Do you live in Israel? Live in Sri Lanka? You live in Cambodia, you live in California, depends on that. But the Gadol, the mission is setting us the, the default, the default halacha. Let's say Koivis wants to sell you Moichin. Moichin is like the small fluff, the small fluffy pieces that remained after the laundry. So then you're allowed to buy it from him. He has Moichin for sale. What can you do with the Moichin? You can fill your little. Uh, a uh, new no, uh, pillow with it, yeah? He sells many of them, he accumulated many of them. Now what? You actually use it for, yeah, for your pillow. Can you buy it from him or did he steal it? He always gets other people's uh, wool or clothes to wash. Now, I'm a Yerushim, I'm Jew. Is it stolen goods or not stolen goods? Of course you're allowed to buy them. Why? That's the Mishnah said. Because we already established in the Mishnah, that the muhin are his, the muhin is something people are not mocked about, they're not particular about, and therefore you're allowed to buy it from him. Now continues the Brysa. Let's say we said, like we said at the beginning, at the hem of the fabric, there are what? There are fibers, there are threads that are not exactly the same color as the rest. He wants to beautify it. How many chutim did you say he can take for himself and be okay with that? What? We said three, and look at that. Noitel shnei chutin el yoinim. Boom. Yeah, a stire, stire. A contradiction between the Mishnah and the Brisa. Because the Mishnah said he can take three chutim, and the Brisa said two chutim. Okay, I hope the people at home, there are millions of viewers can watch us. Yeah. Now comes real fun. Behen shaloi. Let's continue. Veloi kuk yutesamut beiz. Okay, you should not place the guy who is either the soyrik or the koivis. Rashi says the soyrik, the one who combed your, your fabric. Yeah, you have a fabric here. Very nice. Such an ugly color, brown. Okay. And now you have a fabric here. And like all fabric, there is a, yeah, there's weft and warp. Okay. Now you want to stretch the fabric to the best of your ability. According to the different explanations here, there's Rishonim, this, and Rashi says you want to hit it. The way you curve this, you basically stretch it, and here you have folds. You see those little chupchiklach, those protrusions? Don't look at the art scroll. Although I was Nichna and I did the picture like the art scroll, although I think they're wrong, but Lomshane. Anyway, so now here you have, hey, this is bird's eye view. This is looking from above, yeah? You're in the, the workshop of the guy who wants to clean them by hitting them, by hitting, 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 and also he wants to comb them one way or the other, as we're going to see, and he needs to stretch them. What do you do? You basically have a lot of different holes, uh, pegs in the corners, and now you stretch it. You see those protrusions? This one, for example, I call them chupchiklach, the chupchikl over here. Yeah, that protrusion is basically part of the fabric that he stretched in order to stabilize yeah, that's it. You, you, why? You have to stabilize to hit it. So now, oh, now comes fun. The, the koives or soyrek, you know, they have the right to take, this is it, you know, like in the map, like in a city map, you are here. This is an enlarged, I'm sorry, it's not in the screen. Oh, here. This is an enlarged version of this, yeah? This is one stretched protrusion, one stretched pichkale, chupchikle, that is here. He is allowed to, when he's done and he's, it's off the hooks, is allowed to take those parts that are still stretched, cut them nicely. Of course, he has to cut them. They would not go back naturally. He cuts them and makes them now look all very nice and straight. He cuts them. And then what does he do? Those chupchiklach he keeps for himself. And by the way, as opposed to art school, I'm 90% sure that they were also here. It's much more like that from uh, different sources. They would be both here and here. Yeah, on all four sides, he would stretch them. And those stretched parts, those protrusions, yeah, he would actually keep for himself. Ah, now, <laughs> here comes the tug of war. Why? The Koeva says, listen, <laughs> I had to stretch it very, very much. <laughs> I had to give a big stretch. 
No, it's not because I want to take it. No, 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 no. Well, my surname is Rizro Salanta. Of course. All I want is for your baggage to be super stretched. Happens to me that the stretched part is much bigger and the kovis is getting a much larger piece of the pie. Hmm. So the Chachomim standardized it and they said, how do you connect that piece to the peg? You always have other lulois, you have loops that connect the, the end, the stretched end of the, of the stretched end of the thingy, of the, of the fabric. You have three chutim, three, three, uh, three stitches or three uh, uh, loops that connect it to the peg. You're only allowed to put three and no more. Why? Because the more uh, things you put, the more stretch it's going to be. And interestingly, it's nothing to do with the distance. It's to do with how, how tight you actually tighten it and place it. So you're only allowed to have three fabric, three thingies, three uh, stitches on each part, on each chup chick, because this way it doesn't get too far and not too close. Yeah. If you add four or five, it would stretch further. And then Mr. Koivis, the tzaddik, will get too much. We don't want that either. So it's true he's doing a good service for the violin by stretching it and having it nice and straight, the hula, and then cutting it to go back to the original form. But Lemaise, make sure that you don't go overboard and stretch it too much. And therefore, they standardize it by only three stitches. Exactly how the three stitches work, we're going to see later. Continues the b'raisa. When you comb the beged, don't comb it by the shiti. The shiti is the warp. The shiti, by the way, is the stable part. When you, uh, that was my Benazmanim activity, by the way, when I was a kid. In Chofesh it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I used to go to my father's factory. So I saw how the, the fabrics are being, uh, are being uh, fabricated, <laughs> are being uh, weaved, 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 are being weaved, although I had a different job, which was easier, yeah? So the kids are how they weave. You have a loom with the shiti. The shiti is stable all the time there. That you set the shiti. And the erev, the weft goes, uh, goes in and out, in and out, in and out, horizontally all the time, yeah? So then, okay, am I allowed to argue an article? Or no, what do you say? Yeah, am I? So, oh, so mimela, right? So then what? So then when you comb, don't comb it this way, but comb it that way to from sidewise, Horizontally, not vertically. Why? Because when you comb it vertically, yeah, you actually, you may, says Rashi, you may come to hurt the fabric of the fabric, <laughs> the construction of the fabric. Now, those that go this way, lengthwise, vertically, they are like the basis of the building, it's like the foundation of the cloth. The Erev is not so important. The Shti is actually what makes everything stand in its place. And therefore, if you comb it too well, too enthusiastically, and you may come to basically hit one, uh, one fiber of those that are the foundation of the whole baguette, it's going to hurt the baguette, it's going to tear the baguette, and that's not good. So therefore, you should only comb it this way. Comb it to the sides, and that is less damaging, potentially, for the baguette. Yes? So now Jeff was first, actually, for a change. Erev is less important. I think it was consistent in that. In terms of Erev, is not the basis of the whole thing. The Sheti, if you remember from Shabbos, I know we learned Shabbos together. Sheti, you know, Hilchas Shabbos, you have at least two malachas to do just setting the loom. Setting the loom, why? My father told me setting the loom is a very, very, very hard thing. Because if you move one millimeter wrong, then the whole construction is wrong. It's like the difference when you build a building, everybody knows the foundations are much more important than the window on the fourth floor, right? It's a foundation. Every half a millimeter makes a huge change. And that's the Sheti, get me? That's why if you comb the Sheti, some people call Shti, my father said Sheti. Yeah. No, Sheti is, no, Sheti is, is, I said, is, 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 is vertical. The Erev is horizontal. Erev is called West. Erev Ma'arav, West. And in English it's called West, which means you go sideways, like the sun from the east to west. It's easy to remember. Okay, good. No, I also got confused with that at the beginning. No problem. No. Now, yeah, I'm sorry. You were, yes. No. Now. By the way, by the way, Baruch, it's true. The combing was a bit deep, and that's why we're concerned that it may hurt one of the, and may come to disconnect one of the chutim because of that. Now, Oh, what's When you come to cut it, yeah? So it's very nice, you want to make it nice. Now, the part of the bag that's more visible in most godim 
is the length, not the width. Imagine yourself a big scarf, like people used to, used to use in the old days. The scarf that you see, most of the part is this. And this part, when you're going to wear it, is going to be less visible. So you, Mr. Koivis, you're a double-faced guy. On one hand, you want to make it beautiful. When you cut it, you have two interests. You want to cut it, all those spitzkalach, you want to cut them so it should look nice and straight, but you also want to keep it to yourself, right? And eventually make your own baguette from that. So now we tell them, listen, slow down. You're only allowed to cut those that are on the side. Why? Because if they keep protruding and not be nicely cut, nice and straight, everyone's going to see it and that's going to be ugly. But this part, which he did, which I'm sorry for the picture you have in your Gemara. Yeah, but this that he also did stretch, yeah, you don't have to cut it. Why? Because nobody sees it anyways. Yeah, those are the, 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 the width over here is smaller than the length. And most people don't see that bechlal. So I, the Balabais, I don't care that it's going to stay a little bit with spitzkalach all over. So I'll have a spitzkalach thing, like your, the, 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 the end of your pants, let's say your trousers. That's so important. And therefore, in such a case, we say, don't cut it and don't take it yourself. I prefer having it a little bit ugly in a place where nobody sees it anyways, or hardly anybody sees it anyways. And that's better for me, the owner. And don't cut it there. Leave it as it is. That's the way I understood it. Okay. So now, the imbolash voice. If you want to be mashve, yes. Ad tefach rashoi. How far can you go with cutting that spitzkala, that triangle we have over here? Up to a tefach. Bruce mm -hmm. and I debated. I, I'm not sure if it means tefach deep, tefach this way, or tefach that way. Tefach width or tefach length for both. The mind said that piece can only be cut up to a tefach and no more and be taken to the to the koivas. Okay, now, Amama. Now we come with, to speak about the contradiction that Svi was, I think, noticing before. Shnei chutin. How many threads can the person, can the craftsman take? Yeah, let's say the koivas from the end, the hem, the end of the baguette. We said two. Shnei chutin. In the mission we said three. And it says, hold it. Depends if they're alim, if they're big and thick. Or ktini if they are small, if they're thin, which means if they're big, only two. If they're thin, you can take three, obviously. What now we're quoting the brisa? You only allow two. What to lisrok to comb, brush, whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. You only allow to comb it, not lishet yoy. Don't do it this way because it's going to weaken it. Only do it sideways because that's less important. Also, yeah, it's not so uh, uh, mazi. Potentially magic. The Bryce says the other way around. I have another Bryce that's just, just the other way around. That you are allowed to comb it only to its length and not to the width. Boom. Mamish Mamish is You should only comb it by the length, by the important part, the shti, and not by the Arab. What's going on? Answers the Gemara. Here's a slap in the face for modern Hebrew. Today's my day to stand in the soapbox, if you notice. Yeah. Let me get you the answer and then the Hebrew. Obeglima. Glima is an everyday regular shirt. The shirt you come with every day or hopefully every few days to coil up the shear to work. Yeah, or you do you to work out in gym. Regular shirt. Does it have to be super beautiful? No, it has to be strong because you wear it every day. That's called the glima. The baguette that's supposed to be strong but not necessarily so beautifully combed. That baguette, you, all, you should care about what? About the strength. And therefore, when you comb it this way, that's going to weaken it and possibly make holes, problems. No, don't do that. You should brush it sideways, even though it's less beautiful. I don't care so much about the beauty of my white shirt. Who's going to see me already in that? Oh, the sarbila. Sarbila is the fancy, the tuxedo that you have when you go to a chasana, when you go to get your Nobel Prize. Yeah, then what? A very nice fancy Shabbos suit for chasana for this. That's called the sarbila. That one, it's less important for me to be strong, because any I don't wear it that often, but it has to be very beautiful, it has to be a very hunky kind of, uh, of garment. And therefore there, you should, yes, comb it this way. Why? Because coming to the length makes it weaker, but more beautiful. When you come to the actual entire length of the bag and not the width, it comes up looking nicer. So it depends on the customer's uh, requirements, which we standardized in halacha. Does the Gemara have to tell the Koivis how to be a Koivis? Answers the Meiri. Yes, the Gemara is teaching us. So as a craftsman, you have to do the best possible for the customer. Sometimes I would imagine the Koivis 
we'd want to have a very beautiful job done, but it's really hurting the, the fabric, right? Craftsmen do it sometimes, right? They do a very nice job, but not necessarily very professional and strong because they want to impress. So here the Allah says, no, do what's right. If it's a glima, make sure that it's strong. If it's a sarbala, make sure it's beautiful. And according to that, you should come in. What's my problem in modern Hebrew? In modern Hebrew, glima and sarbala are just the opposite. Glima is the king's robe. It's like a nice caper robe. And sarbal is an overall that they wear in the <laughs> sarbal, that they wear in the, in the mechanics, in the, in the garage. <laughs> so just the opposite of real Hebrew. Interesting. In overall. Sarbal is an overall, but that's not over here. Here, sarbal is actually a fancy uh, suit that you wear. Oh, so what did we say? When you stretch the corners of the beggar, those protrusions in the side, don't stretch it too much, and therefore don't, don't stitch them to the peg more than three stitches. Rabbi Irmiya always asks very particular questions in the Gemara. He wants to be very yakish in halacha, and he's asking, I'm tuye ze atuye. Everybody knows that when you sew, even if we're not exactly sewing all our lives, when you sew, you have to go back and forth, right? Yeah, you, you stitch something, you can't just go one way, you go one way and then back, right? So the question was, when you say, when he said three stitches, did he mean three times back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, three, six movements altogether that created three whole loops? Or 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 maybe each motion back or forth is one way, back is one way. So you can only have one and a half altogether. Yeah, that's the question. Teiku remains in a teiku. Next time you take your beggar to the to the koivest and he stretches your clothes, yeah, then go to base din with that. Yes. Yeah. Better. Okay. Now let's continue. <clears throat> As we said in the Mishnah, the soirek, the moichin that he gets, the one, the one who combs, yeah, the one who combs and he has those fluffy stuff that's left over from the combing, don't take them from him because the Mishnah said, they're not his, don't buy from me, it's stolen goods. Why? Because he, what he gets out of the bag is bigger. The, the fluff that comes out of his a, a part of the production, his stage of the production is much not production. The combing is thicker. Those thick pieces are supposed to be the bindings. Oh, here came the golden sentence. Yeah, <clears throat> very pluralistic. If the minig is that you keep what you get, that you allow the story to keep the big pieces and you're not supposed to take them, that's the custom. You came to a new town, you came to Leeds. I don't know. Yeah, that's in England. And the, over there, let's say they leave it by the worker, then by the, by the craftsman, you leave it by him, don't argue with Minaga Mokoim. In every, every, wherever you are, every place, wherever you are in the world, and you get the Soyrek, and the Soyrek sells you a very nice Kar Bekeses. Kar, by the way, also it's not like in modern Hebrew, it's not in the Mishnah in Tyrus, it's, uh, it's a, like a mattress. He sells you an old-fashioned, like a puff, like a puffy thing, like a mattress or a tesis, which is a pillow, and they're full of very nice fluffy fluff, yeah? And why am I allowed to buy it from him? I'm allowed to buy it from him. Why? Zayla, my time, why is that? Anybody? Sure. Shh. I'm surrounded by people with PhD in Bovakama, Kananu Bashinu, because he acquired the Bashinu. Funnily enough, although the Shinu, what's the Shinu? He took all the fluffy stuff, all the, you know, the cotton wool kits, stuffed them together in a pillow case, and he closed the pillow case. Frek the Rashbo. The Rashbo says, why is that called Shinui? You can very easily undo it. Even today, just undo the pillow case and they all fly out. Says the Rashbo, so Shinui, which is changeable, reversible, is that called a Shinui? That's questionable. Says the Rashbo, because here we're not sure he stole it. We don't know. We assume the worst. We know that they tend to steal, like the royim, like the women, like the thing. We don't really know. Because it's a suffix, if he stole, yeah, likely, but suffix, for that level, shinui hachoizer, shinui that's reversible is good enough. Uh -huh. Lower shinui is good for lower ch chances of gzela. Interesting. Don't know about them. Ein lochin migardi. Oh my gosh, here it comes. Let's see. Ein lochin migardi. Gardi is a weaver. Weaver, weaver works in someone's factory in Petach Tikva. Yeah, the weaver. And now you want to buy from the weaver, 
you want to buy from him all kinds of things that have to do with weaving. And I'm suspecting that the weaver maybe stole it from the Baal of Ice. Ain loikin migadin loy irin. Oh my gosh, I forgot to make the picture. Irin is like this, right? The weft has to go back and forth, back and forth. It doesn't just fly by itself, you know? It has something called the, the, the entire uh, fiber, the, not fiber, the entire thread of Erev is spun and located inside a wooden, like a wooden small box, like a wooden stick, a wooden stick called Ira, yeah? That, Buchyar, Buchyar. Yeah, there would be like a wooden stick, okay? And that wooden stick, maybe for the Numa Sechta, somebody wants to buy, if I remember, maybe I'll buy new uh, things, yeah? That wooden stick, yeah, you can show people, that wooden stick has the, the hood with a hole in the, in the end, yeah? And now the weft, as you go along, the weft that's concentrated and coiled over here, yeah? It's sort of, as you throw it back and forth, it lets loose, it kilo meshachrel, loosens and lets out the, the, what's his name, the, the thread. The thread is all concentrated in that little box kind of thing, yeah? And as you go, ba -ba 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 -ba, the, the, the hood, spool it's called, right, right. It's a spool, right, it's called a spool, yeah, and it basically is left behind being part of the fabric. Now, inside that business, you have over here and over here, you have near the spool, you have a small piece of like, imagine yourself like a cotton wool kind of thing. Like, you know, your wife removes the makeup kind of thing. That is inside there, there is a valuable yet small piece of fluff of muhin called ira. And that ira makes sure that it doesn't fly out too quickly, right? You want to moderate that it should go out of that and be part of the fabric in the right time and right place. So that's why to monitor it, to basically, yeah, make sure that it doesn't go too quickly, you have that piece. That piece is what's now being sold by the, that small piece, that small piece of fluffy thing, which is at the end of the box of the spool of the buchia. That is what he wants to sell you now. So now it says in the Braisa, ain't lo, lo irin, don't buy the irin from him. It's small, but important. And he stole it. Don't buy it from him. His stomach stole it. He probably stole it. He's not the owner. Kufi Tesamut Beis, we are how many lines from the top? I don't know, about 15 or so. Line starts with the word Ein Loikhin Migadi. Don't buy from the Gardi. Gardi is the weaver. And by the way, Gardi are considered to be people are not so good, not so tsanua. It says Lo Irin, Beloi Nirin. Now, Nirin are uh, when you have the loom, yeah, the loom, very good. Nirin, yeah, you know your stuff. I didn't do it over here, but basically, the nirin are the, the chutim of the shti, of the basis of the, of the fabric. They are like, they are basically, they enter in and out of like a loop, yeah? And that was the, the, the like a loop, if you know in Ilhas Shabbos, also shtei but nirin, if you remember, yeah, there are like loops. Each one has a loop, which in reality is very, very small. And that loop, that hole is something that is part of the loom. It's part of the loom. And some of them are made out of fibers back then. And they're very easy to steal. There are hundreds of them in each loom. Maybe he stole one or two without the Balabais noticing. The Balabais went home. And now he stole one or two of those loops that the, those loops are kavua. They're part of the loom, yeah? And now he snitched them, he snatched them, he nicked them. He took them home. Now he wants to sell it to you because maybe also in the business of the textile. Veloy punkelin, punkelin. Veloy punkelin. What's punkelin? Punkelin are basically erev. Pedals. Pedals are the, the nirin. And punkelin, one second. Don't ask me until in a, in a few, please, one minute. Veloy punkelin, we are, yeah. Veloy punkelin. Punkelin are basically a whole load, a spool of erev. You have a whole load, just like a package of erev, of the weft kind of uh, of wool, yeah? Below shurup kios, and not the leftover from the spool, from the bundle. Uh, th those you're not allowed to take. Why aren't you allowed to take them? Because they stole them. What are they doing in his possession? Mistama, it's stolen. Rock regets of Akasha. Aval, but, 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 loikin mehen beged menumar erev the shesi tovi veori, which means, let's say the person is telling you a very funny looking kind of garment. That garment, and not for reasons of fashion, is made out of many, many different, um, I'm forgetting the English here, many, many patches. It's made out of many, many patches. So you can tell <laughs> that this guy, the Oireg, he nicked, he left over for himself, he skimmed off the top, 
many different fabrics for many different customers. He works in his house for other people. And that's how he has th that baguette made out of many different colors. Why are you allowed to buy it from him? Because he was coining it, the shinui. Either, right, if it, the baguette was ready that way, says Rashi, it's too big to be noticed. And if it wasn't big, if it was really originally small pieces, those small pieces are shinui. They became a whole new baguette that's not even so easily reversible. And we mainly allowed to buy it from him, one second, Ere Vashesi. Ere Vashesi, he tells you, unbelievable, an Erev, one chut of Erev, by the way, one, one thread of Erev is made out of many thin fibers. There are two different words in English, fiber and a, a thread. A thread is made out of many small fibers. So if you see it's made out of very funny fibers from many different places, you're allowed to buy it. Why? Although he probably stole it, but he spun it. Yeah, he spun it into one big chut, one big thread, and that's called shin and that's allowed. Tavui the orig whether it's spun or if it is a rig, which means it is already woven. What did he have to tell me? He took that funny kind of um, multicolored thing. He joined many of them and he would spun it. It's okay. And also if you wove it, it's okay. You can buy it from him. Obviously, whenever you weave, you already spun it before. What do you spin? You spin the thread. And then with all the threads, you weave a baguette. So if it's woven, of course it was spun. It's like, tell you, I gave, I give Ellen 200 shekels and one of it was 100. Even I know that 100 is part of 200. So if you're telling me that I can buy a, a tovui from him, of course I can buy orig because every orig is also tovui. That's an earlier stage. That's becoming a thread. Amri no, answers Igmara, my arig tichi, tichi. What's tichi? Tichi is basically like the cuckoo that the girls wear, the, the no, they make the ponytail. Yeah, the rubber band that they use, yeah, made uh, that kind of item actually in the May Isha is what? That item is actually, it's woven without being spun. They take very raw fibers without spinning them and in a very primitive way, they weave them. So there is a matzo of something woven, but not spun. It's a very rare thing, but it happens. But don't ask me that it's an automatic thing because it's not. I don't mind you asking questions. We're going to stay here till one o'clock. Bezos Hashem. Very good. Yeah, Vita. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm game. I have a time bit at 12 15. Up until then, I'm with you. Yeah. Nirin. Vita. Tono Bonon. Tono Bonon. To be continued. Tono Bonon. Ain't looking in at Saba. This guy's a guy who likes to die. He loves dyeing. What is it like to dye? To dye wool, dye fabrics. So now, what would you not buy from him? What's the difference between an ois and a dugma? Oisis is as follows. Let's say I want the tzaba. I go to his workshop, Mr. Dyer, and I want him to dye my white shirt uh, for uh, Benazmani. I don't know, to dye it uh, bright red. And he has a very specific kind of color. I cut a small piece of my white shirt, yeah? I give it to him in order for him to give a tryout and try and see if his color get, actually gets absorbed in my in my shirt. So I cut a small piece of the of the real you know of, of the real job kind of material, just as an example, as a sample for him to die to see if it works. And I left it by him by mistake. I'm supposed to take it back. I care about the small piece. And if he sells you a small piece of baguette that looks funny, why does he have a small piece of baguette that's a tryout? Don't buy it from him because he left <coughs> it by him. The Lloyd Dugmus, Dugmus is the other way around. Let's say I want him to, you know, women have many, many more colors in the spectrum than men. You know, all these colors, only they know, the Fukcha, Shmukcha, and Peach. Yeah. So let's say uh, my wife would send me to, the, I don't know, to a dyer to dye it, I don't know, avocado, peach, Fukcha, mauve. You know, there's a color called mauve. There's a color called mauve. You know, even I know it. So I don't know, it's more Fukcha, Pucha. And therefore, I take that, I tell, listen, uh, my dear wife, give me a sample, yeah? Like your wife sent you go shopping, so something to take the bottle, so to know which one to buy, right? He, she gives you a sample of the actual color to show him what kind of color you want, because you will never be able to describe it to him. So if that kind of item is left by him and supposed to, yes, go back to me, and he left it by him, it's probably stolen, it's theft, and don't buy it from him as a customer, biter. Let's say there's semel pieces of wool that are tolush, not small pieces of semel that are actually 
the tzaba is supposed to color all of it. Some of it was left by him, but it's too much. Don't buy it from him. It's stolen. Aval, however, Leukin man begged tzavua chavui b'godim. But if you have an entire beggar, an entire beggar that is died, you don't assume that it's stolen. Either he crafted it and he made it from stolen different pieces and it's shinui, or it's an entire beggar which is too big to hide. It's too, too big. He's a petty thief. He's a small thief. He's skimming off the top. And therefore, he wants to steal an entire beggar that I gave him a commission him to paint. And therefore, the whole beggar newly painted, no, excuse me, oh, you're Newly died, oh, yeah, yeah, said painted instead of died, oh, yeah, 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 so then that you're allowed to buy from him. Again, you're saying the same thing, whether it's spun or just a chut, one chut, or it's a beggar. If I'm allowed to take from him what? I'm allowed to take from him a thread, a, a proper thread that is tovui and he's died, and even that we're not concerned. Go to me, buy. So you have to tell me an entire shirt entire pair of pants, of course, because every baggage was also spun. <laughs> if spinning is already okay, it's different enough, then obviously after spinning comes weaving and then and then sewing, and that's it. And says, Mar, no, my godim namti. You have a baggage, and that baggage is actually a very beautiful, very respectable baggage, which was never spun. You know how they, you, how they make it, how they fabricate it? They press. They press a lot of shmatas. They press a lot of shmatas. They press together a lot of raw material, even before spinning, and they press it together and becomes a baguette. You know which baguette that is? It's the Haredi black hat felt. It's called felt in English. The felt godim are never spun. They, they're never spun. They're never woven or anything. It's basically a lot of uh, fibers that are pressed together, compressed, I think, with a lot of heat to that form, that mold, and that's it. And now you have a black hat for the rest of your life. Okay? I mean, mainly, yes, you can have a baguette without it spinning. I can have spinning without a baguette. Oh, for now, goodbye, the fabrics. We're saying goodbye to the fabrics. Now you gave the tanner, you gave him, you gave him what? You gave him pieces of skin. You want to make it into a hide, right? And now you gave the tanner. You want to cure it, deal with it. How do you say about the thing to die? To die? You die yeah. the to ten. Yeah. To ten. To ten also means to add color. It's part of the tanning. I'm not okay. Uh, the kids, sir. Tanning, is, tanning is also. I know it's processing. But it's also coloring. It's dying. Uh, okay. Okay. You be cholik amongst yourself, and then you tell me the decision. Okay. Anoisen the English community. Anoisen aras Abdan. Hakitsuin. Kitsuin are the also those pieces at the end. In other words, he wants to create, uh, let's say, a leather jacket, leather shoes, leather something. And there's small pieces. You gave him the leather, but the small pieces on the side, or not so small, the pieces of leather left after he cut it, besides to design those pieces. What about them? Let's see. That lushin. Lushin are pieces of, le of excuse me, no, pieces of uh, hair. Let's say the skin was uh, sheep skin. Sheep has a lot of wool. Let's say some wool, he, he, he eradicated some wool, he pulled out, pulled off some wool before starting to work. Now the wool is there. So the pieces of leather are expensive. They usually do not go to the tanner, they go to balabais. Also the wool that's left over, it's a whole piece of, of wool over there, a spool that should go to the balabais. However, but if he washes the piece of leather and a little bit of the wool that's left over is in the water and he takes it out of the water, basically what happens after you take a shower kind of thing. So that, that wool, those small pieces are left by Mr. Honorable Tanner because they're not important like we saw in the mission, by the way, about the koivus in the water. What's left in the water is not significant. What did we say? That if you have a black, what? You have one black line, one black thread at the end of a white garment, and it's not supposed to be there. It was only there from the weaver. Then he's allowed to take, who's he? Then the one, the koivis, the first time you take it to the koivis to do all revamp, and he took out all the black pieces, all the black um, threads from the end, from the hem of the beggar, the all his. He's supposed to take them all out. They're ugly, they're fichy, and they should all stay by him. That's the aloha. Omar Buda. 
His name is Katsra. In Aramaic, a Katsra is a launderer. What's Katsar in Hebrew? The Katsra Shokile, he cuts, me katsar, he shortens. He shortens the Beged. He makes the Beged shorter because it belongs to him, the hem, if it's a very different color. And he takes it. It's called the Katsra. Oma of Yuda. Now comes of Yuda with a very interesting halacha regarding tzitzis. Oma of Yuda. Hakol oilin leminian tcheles. Interesting, which means like that. One would argue, yeah, let's say this would be chayav tzitzis, right? It's a cornered garment. Oh, don't worry, only has two, not four, yeah? So now, let's say here I have a lot of black pieces, which eventually I'm going to get rid of in the next visit to Machbeisa, yeah? I'm going to ask them to cut it off. But for now, it's there. It's temporarily here. One could argue and say, wait a second, what about tzitzis? We all know that the whole of the tzitzis cannot be too close and not too far, right? There has to be a certain location, half in a gudal, three agudalim, the other way. It has to be located, you know, in a very specific place in your baggage. One could argue and play shtick and be a brisker and say, wait a second, hey, if this is supposed to be taken at some point, even though it may happen only next year, maybe that, if I put the hole over here, yeah, maybe that's not called the real end of the baggage because that end of baggage will be removed. It's not, not really, really the end of the baggage. Get what I'm saying? So maybe you should, let's say all this is black, maybe put it here. Ah, but that's also a problem because that's too far. Because if you do consider that as part of the baggage, then if I'm being machmir and don't consider that as part, and I'll put the whole of the threads over here, they'll be too far from the real corner. It's a topic. Is it the corner? Is it not? Says Rav Yudan, don't worry. You can be light. And what? It's part of the baggage. As long as you didn't remove it, it's part of the baggage. You can locate your hole over here, and it's considered to be part of the baggage. Very good. However, Yitzchak Bri copied Alayu. Says Rabbi, the Yitzchak, my son, is makpid, is particular. Yitzchak, my son, was concerned about that topic. Is it or isn't part of the baggage? And therefore, will I want to put the hole over there? So you didn't know what to do. Too far is too far. Too close is too close. And you know what it did? You'd cut it off. Yitzchak, the son of Rav Yudah, he would cut off that part and avoid the problem, but just right from the start, when they arrived from the weaver, he would right away cut the black pieces and life is good. We really can't stop now, I'm sorry. Yeah, which means we said in the Mishnah, we said in the Mishnah like this. Yeah, we said in the Mishnah, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, we have to continue five more minutes. The Kamalitfo. We said, if the, what's his name? Mr. Uh, we're not by the weaver now. We are by Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor is a machat. He has a, a needle. And that needle has leftover thread that stayed there. It doesn't need it anymore. Who gets that extra thread? We said the balabais gets it. Interesting. A small piece of thread. The balabais gets it back. He's the one who provided him with that, like you said. And he's the one who's going to get it back. However, the Kama leads for, how much do you consider a thread that's suitable to actually be used for sewing, for stitching? It tends to be the size of the, the size of the machat. Let's say this is the machat, this is the, the, the needle. The thread has to be the size of the machat plus, the size of the machat and more, okay? Frag the Gemara, who says that my picture is right? Frag the Gemara, Ibailu, Meloy Machat, Bechutzla Machat, Kim Loy Machat, Oidilma Meloy Machat, Bechutzla Machat, Mashu. When you say Meloy Machat, do you mean Meloy Machat times over, twice, which means the size of the Machat, let's say this is five centimeters, so another five centimeters, together 10, or do you say Machat five plus a little bit, five plus, yeah? When he said the machat plus, you mean two machat size? The thread is only big enough to be considered important, demanded back by the bailim if it's the size of the machat double or the machat plus a little bit. My father said today they don't care about it at all, of course, but back then they were very poor. They cared about every tiny thing. And that's a question. Din Torah, Din Torah comes to base Din about that size of thread. We have to thank Hashem that we live in such a rich generation. If I, so now, yeah, Toshma, line starts with Toshma, the Tanya. We're going to actually very easily resolve the problem. The Tanya, it says in the Brisa, a chayat shashir a chayat, what's a chayat? A tailor left over some thread. 
Tochus Mikdei Litzvo Boy, but it was less, less than suitable to be used for stitching. Remember, if you left behind a cut piece of, of fabric, which is less than three by three, what did we say in the Mishnah? Oh, what's his name should keep it? The tailor is allowed to keep it. Not always. Some people are either very poor or very miserly, didn't get attention from their mommy. They get very possessive. They, I don't know what. Is much about bias makpid alone. Sometimes the bal bias is makpid, and he says, "I makpid on every millimeter." Then a real shul bal bias. Okay, you makpid. Then the bal bias. You, the tailor, should give back the bal bias, even piece smaller than three, or what? Or actually a thread smaller than that can be used for sewing. And bal bias makpid alone. A real shul oy. If the bal bias is not makpid, if the bal bias is okay, that's small stuff. I'm a normal guy. Then they belong to the tailor. Zog the Gemara now. If you want to tell me that the size which everyone agrees should always be given back to the owner, and that is double five of the machat and five extra, then kimloi machat, then pochas mikan, what's less than that? Because here, funnily enough, or maybe even stupidly, they argue over less than that. Less than that also has to be suitable for something. Even the biggest miser doesn't care about air. He cares about something that can be used. So if this is what you're supposed to be for sure giving back, if this is the five plus a little bit is what they argue about. That's the one which if they argue yes, if no, no. Then chazi sikhta. What can you do with such a small thing of just the machat plus a little bit? You can use it for a loop. It's such a small piece, you can, you can like, you know, make a loop out of it, like the loops we spoke about before of the stretchers. But if you tell me that the five plus is what's for sure going to always go back to the bylim, that's for sure standard, always go back to the owner, back, goes back to the owner, then mash pochas mikan lemai chazi. If so, five, and so the one that you argue about, the one that's not standard, that's questionable, depends on the miser lifting, then it's just the size of the machat, lemai chazi. You cannot, one second, you cannot do anything, <laughs> you cannot do anything with a thread that is just the size of the needle, because technically you can't work with it. Yeah, I didn't sew so many times in my life, but it's true. Yeah, in other words, the same size of the machat, it starts, you know, playing around itself. You can, don't get anywhere with machat and thread that are the same size. Elash mamina must be, meloi machat, bichutz la machat. I'll summarize now. Must be that the standard thing that you always give back is big. It's five plus five. It's a machat plus another size machat. That kind of thread you always give the owner. If it's anything between this and just the machat itself, if it's nine, eight, seven, six, five and a half, that's up to debate. That depends on if the owner wants, the owner doesn't want, how, how desperate, how poor is the hula the hula. Had we said that the standard thing you always have to give back is five and a tiny bit, then the thing that they argue about that say maybe is just the size of the machat can't be. If the chut is just the size of the machat, there's nothing you can do with it. That's the answer of the Gemara. And I will be very happy to hear a question now, Ellen. No, no, not leather. It's a regular thread, 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 not leather. Regular thread. We have to continue because uh, if you let, let, yeah, 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 you and then we, I'll still have to continue two more minutes because we can't do two. It's not such a readable because we're going to have other people in the theum. And I don't like it when people make a theum, they read an entire almost of more you never learned in your life. It's a little bit frustrating. So I prefer two more minutes to continue, not till the end. And then, yes, I'm listening to you. Right, uh, quick, quick, quick. It's a quick, and for us it will be easy, but not for the people on Monday. Masha Chosh, Bermini. We ask the Gemara. What did we say about the about Mr. Carpenter? We said like this. We said that if he takes big pieces, if he chisels and chisels, and what comes out biggest pieces from the bigger saw, the bigger hammer, then the balabai keeps. If they're small pieces, that from a smaller kind of tool. Then the carpenter gets to keep them. But I mean, if I take more from a brisa, the brisa that seems to contradict it, Masha Chosh Moitzi Bimat Sad, Matzad beforehand was mentioned. 
‫והנפסק במגירה, ‫מגירה זה like a saw, ‫whatever was cut by a saw ‫or by the matzad, ‫which we're going to discuss now, ‫הרי אלו של בעל הבייס, ‫they belong to בעל הבייס. ‫before it, we said that matzad ‫is something that the, the, the carpenter keeps. ‫now we said that matzad ‫is something that the owner keeps. ‫את היועץ מתחס מקדח, ‫you know what מקדח in modern Hebrew is the drill? ‫מקדח back then was like a primitive drill, ‫basically like you, some kind of like, like ‫yeah, like that, right? Yeah, so the, what comes out is like sawdust, which is like a plain, which is a smaller kind of saw. The small pieces, the sawdust, they always belong to the carpenter, unless the guy is a sick uh, Compton. However, there's a stira. Here you said the matzad belongs to Balabais, and you said the matzad belongs to the craftsman. Omarove, there are two types of matzad, yeah? Omarove, yeah, like English, American English, British English, a lot of embarrassing mistakes, yeah? different terms for different dialects. Same thing, the Mishnah and the Brisa. The Asa, the Tana Didan, Ikatati Chatsini. In the place of our Mishnah, our Mishnah, there are two tools, there are two cutting tools. Leraboti, the big one, Karli Koshil. The big one is called Koshil, and the Koshil stays by you, it's a big one. Lezutati Karli Matzad. The Matzad that stays by who? By the carpenter. The Matzad is a small kind of finer tool. That stays by the by the carpenter, the small pieces. But that of the Tanabara, in the place of the, the master of the Braisa, Chadu de Ika, we call it Matzad. There, there's only one piece called Matzad, and because the Matzad there is big, the Matzad of the Braisa is big, the Matzad of the Mishnah is small. That's it. And according to that, he goes to Balabais over there and to the craftsman over here. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, we had 10 minutes extra, but we had to. And tomorrow, Bava Metzia, I started preparing very fascinating, beautiful Masechet. It's very, I'm going to lie to you now and tell you it's very, very easy.